Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you're all doing well. This is the Old Testament in 88 days, and we're on day 9. And today, we'll be reading Exodus 21 through 28. Let's go ahead and get started here in Exodus 21, verse 1. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them, if thou buy an Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the doorpost. His master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. If a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she pleases not her master, who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing that he hath dealt deceitfully with her. And if he have betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not diminish. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. He that smiteth a man, so that he die, shall be surely put to death. If a man lie not in wait, but... Elohim deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar, that he may die. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together, and one smite another with a stone, or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be quit, only he shall pay for the loss of his time, and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall be severe, surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief fall, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, and then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out the manservant's tooth or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. But if the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past, and hath been testified to his owner, and he hath not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner shall also be put to death. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he have gored a son or have gored a daughter, according to this judgment shall it be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man sh shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit, and not cover it in ox or asphalt therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good, and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. And if one man's ox hurt another's that he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it. The dead ox also they shall divide. Or if it be known that the ox hath used to push in time past, and his owner hath not kept him in, and he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. Exodus 22. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up, and he smiten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he had nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. 
the theft be certain he found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten, and shall put his beast, and shall feed in another man's field the, be the best of his own field, and best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. If fire break out and catch on thorns, that it so that the stacks of corn or standing corn of the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. The man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house. If the thief be found, let him pay double. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand in, unto his neighbor's goods. For all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing, which another challengeth to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast to keep, and it die, or be hurt and driven away, no man seen it, then shall an oath of Yahweh be in them both, that he hath not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. If a man borrow aught of his neighbor, and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hired thing, it came for his hire. If a man entice him a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, she shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the drawery of virgins. Uh, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. He that sacrificeth unto any god, save unto Yahweh only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou shalt afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wife shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an usherer. Neither shalt thou lay upon him ushery. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that he, the sun, goeth down. That is his covering only, it is a raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep, and it shall come to pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits, and of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy sons, shalt thou give unto me. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen and with thy sheep seven days it shall be with this, with his dam on the eighth day, thou shalt give it to me. And ye shall be holy men unto me, neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field, ye shall cast it to the dogs. Exodus 23. Thou shalt not raise a false report, put not thine hand with the wicked, to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Neither shalt thou, thou countenance a poor man in his cause. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt not rest the ju judgment of thy poor in his cause. Keep thee far from false matter, and the innocent, and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise, and perverteth the words of the righteous. Also thou sh shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. In six years thou sh shalt sow thy land, and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest, and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field shall eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with thy vineyard, and with thy olive yard. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, and thine ox and thine ass may rest. 
and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month Abib, for in, that, in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. In the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear before Adonai, Elohim. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with love and bread, neither shalt the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of Yahweh thy Elohim. Thou shalt not see a kid in his mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For an angel shall go before thee, and bring thee into the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Pezrites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and fight to break down their images. And ye shall serve Yahweh your Elohim, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, Canaanite, the Hittite from before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit to the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Thou shalt not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. Exodus 24 And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Yahweh, thou, and Aaron, and Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh, that they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice, and said, All the words which Yahweh hath said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh, and rose up early in the morning, and built an altar unto the hill, and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings, and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood, and put it on basins, in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant, and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that Yahweh hath said will we do, and be obedient. And Moses took the blood, and sprinkled it on the people, and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which Yahweh hath made with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moses, and Aaron, and Adab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw, saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand, also they saw Elohim, and did not, and did eat and drink. And Yahweh said to Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of Elohim. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto me. And Moses went up 
into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, and the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days, and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of, of Yahweh was like devouring fire on top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud, and got him up into the mount, and Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. It says 25. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and and fine linen and goat's hairs, and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood, oil for light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, and onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I shew thee after the pattern of the tabernacles, and the pattern of all the instrument thereof, even so shall ye make it. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, and they shall not be taken from it. Thou sh shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work, shalt thou make them, in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. The cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. Thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony which that I shall give thee. And there I will meet thee with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of testimony, of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood, two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold round about. Thou shalt make unto it a border of an hand breadth round about, and thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about, and thou shalt make it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be born with them. Thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover with all of pure gold shalt thou make them. Thou shalt set up upon the table showbread before me alway. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knobs, his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of one side, three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds and the other branch with a knop and a flower, so the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers, and there shall be a knop under two branches the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. And their knops and their branches shall be of the same, and it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. Thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. 
and the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee in the mount. Exodus 26. Moreover thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the self edge in the coupling, and likewise shalt thou make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shalt thou make in the one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold one of another. And thou shalt make fifty tatches of gold, and couple the curtains together with the tatches, and it shall be one tabernacle. And thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be a covering upon the tabernacle. Eleven curtains shalt thou make. The length of one curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits. And the eleven curtains shall be all of one measure. And thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves. And shalt double the six cur curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. And thou shalt make fifty loops on the edge of one curtain that is outmost in the coupling, and fifty loops in the edge of the curtain which coupleth the second. And thou shalt make fifty tatches of brass, and put the tatches into the loops, and couple the tent together that it may be one, and the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remaineth, shall hang over the backside of the tabernacle. And a cubit on the one side, and a cubit on the other side of that which remaineth in, in the length of the curtains of the tent. And it shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side, and on that side, to cover it. Thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering above the badger skins. And thou shalt make the boards for the tabernacle of Shittim Web standing up. Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. Two tenons shall be there be in one board, set in order one against another. Thus shalt thou make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And thou shalt make the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards on the south side southward. And thou shalt make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two ten tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, there shall be twenty boards, and there are forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward, thou shalt make six boards, and two boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they shall be coupled together beneath, and they shall be coupled together above the head of it unto one ring. Thus shall it be for them both. They shall be for the two corners and they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver sixteen sockets two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board and thou shalt make bars of shittim wood five for the boards and one for the side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for those two sides westward and the middle bar in the midst of the bo boards shall reach from end to end and thou shalt overlay the boards with gold, and make the rings of gold for places for the bars, and thou shalt overlay the bars with gold. And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, which was shewed thee in the mount. And thou shalt make a vial of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of cunning work, with cherubims shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold, their hooks shall be of gold, upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches, that it that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony, and the veil shall divide you between the holy place and the most holy. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. And thou shalt set the table without the veil, and the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south, 
and thou shalt put the table on the north side. And thou shalt make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twine linen, wrought with needlework, and thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold, and their hooks shall be of gold, and thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them. You know what's interesting? If you do a search, um, just type in like at the old tabernacle, you can see tons of pictures of like recreations, people who spent so much time and effort reading, you know, all this over and over and over again to get the exact details. And there's some really cool uh, replicas based off the Bible. Um, and like, and there's, it's just so cool to look at. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. Exodus 27, 2. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof, and his horns shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. And thou shalt make his plans, pans to receive his ashes and his shovels and his basins and his flesh hooks and his fire pans, all the vessels thereof thou shalt make of brass. Thou shalt make for it a grate of network of brass, and upon the net shalt thou make a four brazen rings in the four corners thereof. And thou shalt put it under the compass of the altar beneath, that the next, that the net may be even to the midst of the altar. And thou shalt make staves for the altar, staves of shit and wood, and overlay them with brass. And the staves shall be put into the rings, and the staves shall be upon the two sides of the altar to bear it. Allah with board shalt thou make it, as it was showed thee in the mount, so shall they make it. If thou shalt make the court of the tabernacle for the south side southward, there shall be hangings for the count of fine twine linen of a hundred cubits long for one side. The twenty pillars thereof and the twenty sockets shall be of brass, and uh, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets shall be of silver. So, and likewise, for the north side in length, there shall be hangings of a hundred cubits long. And his twenty pillars and their twenty sockets of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the breadth of the court on the west side shall be hangings of fifty cubits, their pillars ten and their sockets ten. And the breadth of the court on the east side eastward shall be fifty cubits. The hanging of one side of the gate shall be fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. On the other side shall be hangings fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And for the gate of the court shall be a hanging of twenty cubits of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. Wrought with needlework, and their pillars shall be four, and their sockets four. And the pillars round about the court shall be filleted with silver, their hook shall be of silver, and their socks of brass. The length of the court shall be a hundred cubits, and the breadth fifty everywhere, and the height five cubits of fine twine linen, and their sockets of brass. All the vessel of the tabernacle, and all the service thereof, and all the pines thereof, and all the pins of the court shall be of brass. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they should bring thee purple, uh, pure oil, olive, beaten for the, the light to cause the lamp to burn always. In the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from every evening to morning before Yahweh. It shall be a statue forever unto their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. And Exodus 28. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, Ithamar, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty, and thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me. Priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a broidered coat, a mitre, a, and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. 
and they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and they shall make the ephah of gold, blue and purple, of scarlet and fine twine linen with cunning work. Thou shalt have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and so it shall be joined together. And the curious girl of the ephod which is upon it shall be of the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones, and grave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone, and their six on the rest on the other stone, according to their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shalt thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches of gold. Thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before Yahweh upon his two shoulders for memorial. And thou shalt make ouches of gold, and two chains of pure gold at the ends of wreathen work shalt thou make them, and fasten the wreathen chains to the ouches. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work after the work of the ephod that shalt thou make it, of gold, blue, purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen, shalt thou make it. Four square it shall be, being doubled, a span shall the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof, and thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardis, a topaz, and a carbuncle, this shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper, and they shall be set in gold in their enclosings. And the stone shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the end of wreathing work of pure gold, and thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shalt put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate, and thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate, and the other two ends of the two wreathen chains thou shalt fasten in the two ouches, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. Thou shalt make two rings of gold, and thou shalt put them upon the two ends of the breastplate, in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. Two other rings of gold shalt thou make, and shalt put them on the two sides of the ephod, underneath, toward the forepart thereof, over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod. And they shall bring a bind the breastplate by the rings thereof, unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it may be above the curious girdle of the ephod, and that the breastplate be not loosed from the ephod. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before Yahweh continually. Thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart and uh, when he goeth in before Yahweh. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before Yahweh continually. Thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all blue, and there shall be a hole in the top of it, and the midst of it shall have a binding of woven work round about the hole of it, as it were the hole of a habergeon, that it be not rent. And beneath, upon the hem of it, shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and scarlet round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. And shall be upon Aaron to minister and to sound, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before Yahweh, and when he cometh out that he die not. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it, like the engravings of a signet holiness to Yahweh. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the mitre, upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be, and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, and Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things, which the children of Israel shall hollow in all their holy gifts, and it shall be always upon his forehead, that they may be accepted before Yahweh. And thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make the mitre of fine linen, and thou shalt make the girdle of needlework, and Aaron's sons Thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shalt thou make for them, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him, and shalt anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that 
they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness, from the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. And it shall be a statute for ever unto him and his seed after him. Okay. It's always interesting to get these very uh, detailed chapters about things. So we're, we're not even there yet. Just wait. Um, I remember during my first Bible reading, uh, reading the Bible in a year project, there is some rough spots. No disrespect to the Bible, but uh, some of these chapters are a bit rough, especially for anybody who's new to reading the Bible. Um, it could be rough. It could be confusing. That's why I always think you should read the New Testament first. But um, yeah, it can be a little dry sometimes, all the dimensions and measurements. It's really hard to actually grasp what it's saying, to have a mental image of it, because, you know, cubits and all these measurements we don't know, we don't use. Most people don't use and know them. So it's hard to visualize it, but um, it's interesting that there's so many minute details in the Bible. So it, that kind of makes it unique because, you know, what other, uh, you know, holy text is there that goes into great detail about this stuff and also great detail into genealogies? I mean, just the Bible. It's, it's awesome. Overall, it's an awesome. Bible is awesome. Some parts a little bit. Uh, more tough to understand and to get and to read through but uh, I'm gonna keep on going through I'm not gonna skip anything I'm just gonna read it all the way through like I did in the yearly reading project except for this time it's gonna be much faster much much faster so thanks for joining me guys hope you have a great evening morning noon wherever you're at and as always TTFN ta-ta for now take care God bless remember to put God first in everything you do have faith in him have trust in him and wait upon him you know Sorry. We'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with more Exodus. We have uh, two more days of Exodus. So, thanks again. See you later.